Hello students, let us discuss in this particular session, let us discuss the first unit of uh, nutrition, the physiology part that is the nutrition. In that we will be just discussing the first topic in the unit nutrition that is constituents of normal diet and their daily requirements. Constituents of normal diet and their daily requirements. So that will be discussed in this particular short session. So, when we are seeing this normal diet, what exactly mean by that normal diet? A normal diet actually represent here the balanced diet. The balanced diet, that is actually the normal diet. What is actually mean by the balanced diet? The diet which contains the main major six key nutrient groups. What are those six key nutrient groups? The first one is a protein. Second one is carbohydrates. Then lipids or fats vitamins minerals and most importantly water so if or if your food or if your diet contains all these necessary nutrients the six key nutrient groups then it will be a balanced diet but it should be in a particular proportion that we will be discussing later but it should contain all these six major nutrients that should be supplied to your body for your body's normal growth and uh, other activities now, for what purpose each of these nutrient group is taken? That is another important thing that we have to discuss. The first thing, the protein. Proteins are involved in growth, repair and general maintenance of the body. That's why protein should be there in your diet. So, proteins are involved in growth, repair and general maintenance of the body. So, re require that particular thing and you must supply the protein through your normal diet to your body. Now, carbohydrate is the second thing. Carbohydrate, we know that it is a main energy source. And we have learned about the uh, glucose metabolism in biochemistry part. That is glycolysis, then TCA cycle, then electron transport chain, and finally, okay, electron transport system, and finally the ATP is released. So, in order to release the energy, carbohydrate is the first nutrient that is considered by our body. And then after lipid will be considered and then after protein will be considered. So the main or the first source of energy is carbohydrate. So carbohydrate should be supplied to provide your the provide energy for your body works. Now the third thing is the lipids or fats. So in case of the lipids or fats, we can see that or we have learned in biochemistry that uh, it is the main energy in terms of the amount of energy released per unit or per that particular gram. So, the amount of 1 gram of carbohydrate, the energy released by 1 gram of carbohydrate is far less than 1 gram of lipid. So, during lipid oxidation, large amount of energy will be released out. But it is not the first source of energy. It is secondary source of energy only. The first source is uh, especially the carbohydrate only. Okay, so lipids, why lipids should be there in your diet? They are the rich source of energy and we can see that the key component of cell membranes. So cell division require the plasma membrane synthesis and all and you have to provide the cholesterol and other lipid molecules so that uh, the entire mechanism of cell division and other thing is uh, ongoing without any break. So the components of cell membrane and then signaling molecules and as myelin that insulate neurons. Signaling molecules in the sense uh, you have learned about uh, steroid hormones. Okay, steroid hormones. Steroid hormones. What is the best example that you can find? Testosterone is there. Okay, testosterone is there. Estrogen is there. Progesterone is there. Aldosterone is there. Uh, everything. Those molecules, signaling molecules are actually formed of lipid or fat and that's why it is known as a steroid hormones. So, for the synthesis of those compounds, we require lipid. That's why you have to supply lipid through your diet. Then only it will be considered as a balanced diet. Now, the next thing is the vitamin. Vitamin, even though they are not uh, the direct source of energy, entire body activity require vitamins because it is a key component for all range of biochemical reactions. You have learned about uh, NADP, NAD, 
Yeah, right, NAD plus FAD, coenzymes. And the thing is actually formed from this particular vitamins. And it's not only, it is not restricted to these kinds of molecules. Instead, it is, it is having a broad function. Vitamins are having broad function, but it is required in minimum amount only. And the extra amount will be excreted out through urine. So, the vitamins are important because it is actually taking part in the major or wide range of biochemical reactions and that's why it should be supplied through your balanced diet. In addition to that, in this COVID situation, we have learned about uh, the vitamin role okay, in your immune system functioning. So that is also that also should be added in this aspect because in COVID situation you have learned that uh, if you are just taking vitamins especially vitamin C, vitamin D etc then it will be boosting your immune system and helping your immune system to fight against uh, all those viruses, virus attack. Even common cold can be cured uh, somewhat easily if you are taking vitamin C. So vitamin C is important in that aspect too, immune system functioning too. Now the next thing is the minerals. Minerals are mainly needed for maintenance of your ionic concentration. That means the maintaining the ionic balances in your blood. Okay, and also it is required for uh, uh, for the catalytic uh, in the sense of catalytic support for many biochemical reactions. We can see that uh, some minerals are required for uh, as a metallic ion, and all those things are required for uh, working as the cofactor for enzymes, etc. So in biochemical reactions, minerals are playing a role and also for maintenance of ionic balances in your blood and body fluid, the minerals are required. And the last but most important one is the water. And water is crucial for life that we know. All the metabolic reactions are taking place within an aqueous environment. And water should be supplied. When we know that life originated in water itself, so water is a crucial to life. And water acts as a solvent for other molecules to dissolve in. So these are the main six nutrient component that should be supplied. And then only you will be considering it as a balanced diet. Now, this component should be there. Is it fine? No. If this component is there, that, that's okay, fine. But in addition to that, your diet should contain some more molecules that is not included as part of the balanced diet but the first most important thing is nothing but the fibers fibers uh, we have learned like narigal okay daralam narigal adangiya bhakshanam kalikkanam ennu ningal kettundavum for normal digestion process to takes place normal digestion process to takes place okay appo in addition to the above nutrients a balanced diet should contain fibers or we will be otherwise calling it as roughage okay you can just put e also with that roughage which is a non-nutritious it's not contributing any nutrient value to the food instead it is helping in or it is aiding the movement of food through the gut okay so that's normal gut movement uh, the food movement through the gut it's actually uh, made easy with the presence of fibers in your diet. So it's actually non-digestible carbohydrate, fibers like thing. Okay, non-digestible uh, carbohydrate, polysaccharides especially. And that is actually non-nutritious. You cannot derive any nutrients because it is not digestible. That's why. So that's what I mean by the fiber. So fibers are also playing a role in a non-nutritive way instead for aiding the motility of food through the gut. Now some other terms we have we can just discuss. So what should be a balanced diet? A balanced diet should contain the six major component. What are they? Protein, carbohydrate, lipid or fat, vitamins, minerals and water. In addition to that what should be there? Fiber should be there for the normal easy movement of food through the gut. Now let us see some other term. Essential nutrients. You have learned about essential vitamins. Essential fatty acid essential amino acid what are they those are the nutrients that should be supplied through your food because your body does not have any a capability to produce it so there is no mechanism to produce it in your body as a result you have to supply that particular food or that particular nutrient through your food 
and that type of nutrients is known as the essential nutrients you have learned about essential amino acids what are the essential amino acid leucine is there right histidine is there sometimes it is considered as semi essential even even though that is a situation we can just consider it as essential histidine isoleucine etc okay leucine histidine isoleucine etc will be considered as the essential amino acid so those amino acid that should be supplied through the food and your body does not have any mechanism to synthesize it from the precursor is known as the essential amino acid in the same way we can apply that term to everything so we will be just making it as the common term essential nutrient that should be supplied through the food your body does not have any capability to produce it so if you are just considering all the discussed fact above we can conclude and define balanced diet as what a balanced diet can be defined as the diet which contains all the body building and energy giving nutrients in the right amounts and the correct proportion needed by a person for optimum growth health repair and reproduction this is actually a balanced diet so in the first sentence we have defined the balanced diet as the one which contains all the six nutrients there we did not consider the amount proportion etc now we are just concluding the definition of balanced diet as the food or the diet which contain all body building and energy giving nutrients in the right amount and the correct proportion needed by a person for optimum growth health repair and reproduction now a balanced diet so we have we are considering right amount correct proportion etc so a balanced diet will be different from individual to individual suppose i am taking a balanced diet then that will be different from the balanced diet that is recommended for you because each person is different each person's sex is different each person's occupation is different each person's work is different each person's body requirement is also different therefore we have another term that should be considered when we are just discussing the balanced diet and that is what mean by the drv okay drv what is mean by drv dietary reference values it is actually the range of dietary intake levels for all nutrients and energy for males and females throughout life so what you have to take if you are male what you have to take if you are female and what you have to take if you are working in an outside environment what you have to take if you are working in an inside environment so based on the situation the drv value also is varying among different individuals okay that's what the second sentence is saying that the drv vary among different individuals what is drv dietary reference values what amount of diet and in which proportion you have to take daily depends on whether you are male or female okay so that will be varying among different individuals just male and just female we cannot restrict on that particular fact instead we have some more factor that is also determining the daily dietary reference okay as there what we can say the different individuals as their exact energy requirements depends on sex age occupation and many other factors okay so what we have what we will be considering so drv will be representing in the form of an average value okay and that will be deviating always we are uh, representing a scientific value with a plus or minus right in biostatistics statistics you have learned it plus or minus because error should be there error will be there so if i am taking some amount of food uh, 200 gram of food you may not require as you are female and uh, your body weight is comparatively less so you may be requiring only 100 gram okay so it will be varying among different individuals so as a result we are just taking it as an average value and uh, that is uh, used uh, that is uh, represented by the term estimated average requirement so most of the drv tables will be representing ear what is mean by ear 
estimated average requirement estimated average requirement so you will be just above the average or below the average based on your situation okay so with the understanding that some individuals need more than the value and some individuals need less than this value okay so that is what mean by the estimated average requirement and uh, we can find out that estimated average requirement will be represented by satisfying two groups the so first group is 97.5 percentage of the population and the second group is the 2.5 percentage of the population if you are uh, representing an er value uh, satisfying uh, 97.5 percentage of the individual that will be rni reference nutrient intake rni and if you are just satisfying the 2.5 percentage of the individual that is requiring very less amount of dietary requirement then it will be represented as lrni okay lrni that is actually lower reference nutrient intake reference nutrient intake and lower reference in nutrient intake that are the two values used for representing ear and ear is used for representing dietary requirement that is dietary reference values okay so that's about uh, the dietary reference values now let us see what amount or what calorie what energy that you have to take per day okay, it will be represented as kilo calorie and your balance diet should have a restriction in this aspect the energy from cereals should not exceed more than 75 percentage of the total requirement energy from fat or oil should not exceed 50 percentage of the total calorie requirement and uh, from refined carbohydrates it should be around five percentage it should not exceed more than five percentage of the total calorie you are supplying through the food so that is a combination of different okay different food sources that will be providing the energy requirement or nutrient requirement to your body so 75 percentage from cereals 15 percentage from oil and fat and uh, exclusively 5 percentage from carbohydrate and what about our situation we are just taking 75 percentage from carbohydrate price right and we are just taking uh, around the 25 percentage from what oil and fat and if you are just taking one and one from here around two percentage only you are just taking in the form of cereal so you are just taking the reverse right in your normal situation we know that so it should be changed you have to follow this particular thing in order to convince your body that you are taking a balanced diet so let us see let us see what are the daily reference values for each individual male and female and depends upon age so you don't have to remember the entire numericals that is represented here instead you can just feel the changes that is happening with age that's all and what you have to focus is the question can come under this area during pregnancy and during lactation how much amount should exceed the normal take taking value so it should be 200 percentage you have to exceed 200 plus 200 if your age is for example around 19 to 15 years so you're female because you are pregnant and then you have to take a 1940 plus 200 suppose the prostitution has occurred and the baby has come so lactation period is there and during lactation period you have to exceed one more amount that is 450 to 480 this you have to focus you don't have to focus on the entire value that is represented here you just focus how it is varying among male and female how it is varying among different age groups that's all don't remember don't try to remember the entire numerical values so that's about uh, the first part that is uh, the constituents of normal diet and their daily requirements so just revise the lesson once more and uh, make sure that you are having a good idea about what is meant by balanced diet what is actually drv and uh, what is actually ear and how the calorie values will be changing per person it depends on sex and age and also on pregnancy and lactation period just remember these things and you also you have to remember what is the contribution done by the six major nutrients that you are taking through your balanced diet
ओके थैंक यू